is what everybody wants to know about. That, right there, that camber. I'm gonna explain this the best I can, like I said. I'm out taking pictures right now. I figured I'd start the intro to this video. As soon as I get home, I'm gonna start diving into this. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about what went into it, what came out of it, what I had to do to get it. I had to extend this arm, extend that arm, extend this axle, do what there, I had to do stuff like that. I'm gonna finish up this, get back to the house, put it up on jack, and get under it, and try to provide the best visuals as I can. I know it's gonna kinda be hard. I'm on the floor, I don't have a lift at home. I'm gonna try my best to show you guys everything. Some people might not know, but the bag system for a GT does not work with a Cobra rear end. You have to get a new bag system. A lot of people don't know. Lower control arms, they're aluminum. That's something that surprised me. Luckily, I work in a field where I know a welder who was capable of welding aluminum. Some people were not. I got turned down on a lot, a lot, a lot of different welders on those arms. I, like I said, I'm fortunate for the heads up. If you don't know somebody that's willing to do something like this, a lot of people think this is dangerous. They think it's a liability. They won't touch it. With this video, I'll be explaining just how to do this. I'm not saying that this is affordable. I'm not saying this makes sense. I'm not saying that this is safe. Um, there's a lot of question marks there. A lot of people don't know what goes into this. I'm just going to explain how I did it and what it took to get that wheel crooked. Cause I know a lot of people wanna know. With that, let's get into it. All right, back in the garage. Let's do this. Got the car it up, we'll get it up on jack stands and we're gonna dive into it. to structure this video is I want to lay everything out price wise what had to change what I had to buy to comply with the new rear end then after I explain all that we'll go into the rear end and I'll show you what I had to do and show you where it was and put a picture to what I was saying for starters how much did it cost that's a big question the IRS I got was $900 a guy had got it he had acquired it from a guy who wanted to take the IRS out of his car and put a solid rear axle in it for racing and wound up never paying the guy. So the guy kept his rear end and sold it for what the guy should have paid him to do the job. To start out, that's a really good deal on an IRS. I got a good deal, I found a good price, and I pretty much stole it. Normally, a good IRS with all the components, everything you'll need, you're probably gonna be around 1500, between 1000 and 1500. So that's the first expense to look out for. Another expense that most people probably don't know this, whether you're static or bagged, the Cobra rear end does not comply with a GT rear end, no matter what you are, static, bagged, washers, doesn't matter. You're gonna have to get new struts, get a new mount for either the coils or the bags. They're in a completely different location, and I'll show you guys all that here in a second. There's a new added space to account for with the Cobra rear end that GT bag struts just don't comply with. They will not raise your car up off of the wheel. You'll be dragging all the way down the highway. I found that out because I put the rear end in, aired up to about 120 PSI just to get it off the wheel to make it to this show that I was going to. Doesn't work. Not safe, not cool, not fun. Rear end bag setup. Cobra, had to buy a new Cobra system. About 500 bucks, given, give or take, given shipping, taxes, and everything else, it's about 500 bucks. It's another expense to look forward to. Another thing to look forward to, exhaust. From the mid pipe back, completely different. The GT exhaust goes over the solid rear axle. Cobras go under, out, and up. Have to buy that whole new system, or if you know a guy that can fab it up, they'll have to fab up a whole new section. That cost me about 450, another $500 tab. These all come with the new rear end. They don't comply with GTs. They were all designed different, completely different rear end, completely different system. You'll have to account for that, and it kind of hurts a little bit. But 
you pay to play. Something else to account for, you'll need to know a guy who can weld aluminum. These rear end lower control arms, if you're going to add camber, are aluminum. They're cast aluminum. They're a special type of aluminum. I'm fortunate enough to work for a company that provides scrap metal that I was able to acquire. We have aviation grade welders who were not only capable, but also willing. You know, find your welder who's willing, that's one thing. Capable is another, but to find them both, that's hard to do, man. Some people don't agree with this stance life. They don't agree with camber. They don't find it safe. They don't want to be held accountable for the liability. So that was something I had to figure out. That was another hard thing to do. I didn't realize they were aluminum. The front lower control arms, they're steel. Easy to weld, easy to match materials, easy to get you going. Rear end, not so much. And with the rear end, once you extend the axles, and with the rear end, once you extend the lowers, that axle doesn't reach. You need to make sure that your axle reaches. With that, I had to cut my axle in half and add a spacer. Again, I'm fortunate enough that I had material at my, my work and I have machinists that are willing to help me manually lathe a piece of round stock down to the diameter that I needed. And then we put 45 degree chamfers on it and my welder, again, was willing and capable of filling that chamfer in with welds all the way around so it's completely structurally sound. No, this is not a race car. Don't be doing digs if you're gonna do this. Don't be doing digs. It will probably snap, it will not hold up. With that, you'll have to make sure that you have enough of a spacing to leave axle play. You don't want them too stiff. You don't want them too loose that they're gonna come out. That's a big part. You don't want to deal with that, and that is not safe if you do it incorrectly. You have to, have to, have to, if you're going to do this, measure twice, cut once. That is a fact. It will hurt you in the long run. It could be unsafe. It could be dangerous, and you could get hurt. Not something you want. And the ABS wires, your ABS sensors, they're not the same. They are different. They mount different. They plug into the same place underneath your rear seats, but they are different once you get to the rotor. I haven't installed mine yet. I don't mind looking at the ABS sensor light, but that's something you don't want to look at. That is something that you're going to have to encounter if you don't get it with your kit. Again, my IRS system came with everything. He had the wires, he had everything. I mean, he had everything, axles and everything. If you don't have that, you have to account for the exoskeleton, your axles, your diff, your control arms, your ABS wires, and there are brackets that I'm going to show you here shortly that you have to have or it will not work. Other than that, this system is pretty much bolt-on. I took it out, I took my solid rear axle out, and I put this new system in completely by myself with the help of my dad who just lift the floor jack when I was putting the IRS in place. Other than that, it's very capable of doing this in a garage setting. You don't have to know a guy with a lift. If you do, awesome. That's gonna help you a lot. That's gonna help you save a lot of time. That's gonna help you save a lot of stress, a lot of effort. Oh man, that would have been nice to have. It is completely doable. It's possible to do it on the floor in your garage with a simple floor jack and some hand tools. That's all I had, that's all I did it with. In saying all that, I'm gonna start showing you guys around it. I'm gonna show you the brackets I was talking about. I'll show you where I cut my axles. I'll show you where I cut my lower control arms. I'll show you the exhaust. I'll show you the bag setup. I'll show you everything. And I'll try to remember, I'm not too keen on it anymore, but I will try to tell you what I remember about taking the solid rear axle out, just to give you an idea what was kind of difficult for me, what to look forward to. Um, and yeah, hopefully this informs somebody. I know this is the video everybody's been wanting to see. I know this is the information everybody's been wanting. Hopefully I get it all covered. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to remember all of it, but for what I can remember, I know this is going to help some people. And if nothing else, it'll make it so it's not as a, as scary of a job to tackle if you decide to spend the money. And like I said, this is not cheap. This is not what some people would consider safe. This is not sensible. It doesn't make sense. It's purely for aesthetic purposes and stancy boy things. Let's get into it. I apologize if I miscount, but I'm almost certain that you've got mount point up there. You've got right in here is where the old solid rear axle running arms would mount. You've got that mount point. You come under here, and you've got where this mount is right here. This right here is where another running arm was. And then you come over here, got the same thing. You got that guy there, and then up in there. That's where all four mount points were for the old solid rear axle. The running arms came out of those four mounting points. That's what held it straight, that's what held it up. And then you got mounted by the suspension struts. With that being said, the new mount points for the IRS do not utilize that mount point up there and the one on the other side. However, we do utilize this mount point, that mount point on the other side. So we're gonna come in here to the wheel well and got this bracket. This is the bracket I was talking about. There's one on each side, same spot. You are going to need this bracket. Make sure if you buy an IRS set, system, whatever you want to call it, make sure they have this bracket. It looks like this piece here mounts here, it mounts here, and it mounts in these two bolts here. But then it comes up, comes out, and over. 
and then your IRS actually mounts right here. There's one bolt holding that in on either side. There are four mount points total to hold this whole system in. It is that simple. This is subtracting the struts being mounted right there. Other than those four mounting points, the drive shaft is connected, and uh, I mean, that's that simple, guys. For anybody that was fearing doing this job, thinking you'd have to fab up a bunch of stuff or come up with a diff bunch of stuff to put it on here, you really don't. It's just a lot of stuff that doesn't comply with GTs, that comply with Cobras. That's what you're gonna have to encounter. That's where the money's gonna be paid. As far as actually buying a system and running it, you can run this system, I mean, probably for around $2,000 if you did your own labor, no problem. I know that's a lot. I know that's scary but you got to pay to play that's the name of the game that's the game we're in when it comes to it yeah this is stupid yeah this isn't right this is kind of silly it's overpaid I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing with my money but I enjoy it it makes me happy man and I, I get smiles when I get asked about it I love hearing about it from you guys I love being able to ride around and see people break their necks man if I'm honest <laughs> that's why I wanted to do these videos I, I love the conversation this car brings me I love the good people it brings around me and I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to feel what I feel even though it's not a smart financial decision you can't take it with you when you die I love this thing with that being said I'm gonna show you the bag system that I had to buy and why I had to buy it with this bag system this is a Cobra rear end bag system double bellowed GTs are just one sleeve they're not double bellowed like this and because of the running arms because of the running arms that you're eliminating they used to mount roughly in the same position but the running arms came up to about here quite a bit higher to be honest and so the gap between this pocket up here which is where your bags will mount up top and where it mounted down below was a lot shorter of a distance this distance was way shorter when I got this it dropped it way down here so we went from up here to way down here and to account for that the rear end Cobra system bags have this pocket that's a spacer and it's got this big space Spacer on top. You'll need that if you ever want to get off of the floor. You'll have to buy this. Unfortunately, there is no way around it unless you want to run 130 psi, which is completely unsafe. It's not fun. It's not comfortable. It's very dangerous. I wouldn't recommend it. Also, and something else to take note of with this system: these struts. Fairly simple. Mount down here. Cobras are not used to having bags. I had to space it out. It was rubbing. As you can see, I'm still pretty close. So I went to the store, I got heavy, heavy, heavy grade washers, and I had to space this thing out. It was hitting the arm. That was something I did not account for, I was not ready for. I'm just making sure you guys know what I had to go through and what you'll have to go through. That does not fit, it's annoying, but it's a pretty simple fix, just so you're aware of that. With that being said, I also want to show you guys my lower control arms. This is how I cut them, this is how I extended them, and this is how he welded them. I cut them towards the end. This is the cut. Cut them towards the end, it was the only straight spot I had. Found a piece of pl piece of aluminum that fit roughly the same length of what I had measured. The way I went about that was I unbolted this bolt here, and I just pulled this out as far as I wanted it, and then I just held it, and I used a tape measure. <laughs> it wasn't uh, too complex, it's kind of what I went off of, and I duplicated it over there on that side. And we threw chamfers on this piece. So there's chamfers on all four sides of both, both ends of this and he filled it with two welds per side. So I have two, four, six, and eight welds on each side. There's 16 welds total holding, holding this together in place. And it's aluminum, that's why it's bare metal. I thought it looked cool. It won't rust on me, it won't corrode. That is something you will have to do if you wanna get roughly the degree of camber that I have. And so now if we go in here, there's my cut axle. I had to cut it directly in the middle. Milled this down, the space to the correct diameter. I had to mill this down to the correct diameter. We put 45s on this part as well. And there are about four welds deep on each side of this one. So there's eight welds total. The complete diameter of this round stock holding this in place. And this was steel. This will rust if you leave it bare metal. So I just grabbed heat sensitive paint that I had laying around and threw a couple coats on it so that it wouldn't corrode and it wouldn't get any worse just being bare metal. With all that being said, let's go over some of the specs of my things that I had to do to get what degree of what. This spacer in here, I cut at roughly one and a half inches with 45 degree chamfers on either end. That is a one and a half inch spacer to keep the axle play in this, make sure that it still rotates properly and doesn't come out of the spline in the diff or in the knuckle. This block, 1.7 inches on either end, gave me roughly aired out a negative 12 degrees of camber. My wheels are 19 by 13 inches wide in the rear I have a five and a half inch lip on these wheels I have a seven and a half inch barrel on the inside get the fitment that you want you'd have to do your own measuring but if you like the fitment in my videos my photos those are my specs 
I don't know the offset, I apologize because these are low disc wheels, my fronts are high disc, and I've, I've relipped them so many times that I just don't know what's what anymore. But I do know that's a five and a half inch lip, fronts are four and a half inch lip, they're 11 and a half inch wide in the front, 13 inch wide in the rear. 1.7 inch spacer on the control arm, and a roughly one and a half inch spacer on the axle. That is how you get the rear camber, that is how you install an IRS very quickly. I mean, I've gone over this as quick as I can to make sure you guys don't get bored, but also retain as much information as I need to pass on to you guys. So with that being said, everything that I just said, I want to make sure that if anybody has any questions about anything, if there's anything anybody wants to know, I am more than willing to make like a Q&A type video and go over this again. I'll get under there with, and I'll go over any questions that anybody has with visuals. I know that was very quick. I know that was very rough. I know I'm on the floor. I know I don't have the best space, Ryan, but the main points that I can take away from this are that you're going to need a new exhaust half section, you're going to need a new bag setup, and you're going to need a welder capable and willing to weld aluminum and help you with these camber boys type projects. And you're also going to need wide wheels. These cars can take wide wheels. Five and a half inch lip, that's what I found works best. Whatever size barrel you want, anywhere between seven and a half and anything under, you may be able to go wider. I haven't tried. That's just what I have. 13 inch wide wheels fit fine. No rubbing issues. They fit perfect. My fitment is good. The tires are a little big. I have new tires. I'm going to try those out soon. I'm going to try to vlog that and show you guys the shop that I go to. They're pretty rad. They have all kinds of drift cars and anything like that. They have awesome stuff. They're awesome guys. Great guys. 275, 35, 19 on a 13 inch wide wheel using the exact setup I just explained. Not so good. It works, but they rub. It makes for a hard time airing out. It's just too tight. Everything's too tight. So I'm going to try a 275, 30. See where that goes. Just for anybody's future reference, I've gone through tons of tires. I mean tons of tires. I have a whole stack of tires behind us. I got a whole new set of tires on these spare wheels. I have gone through some tire trialing and erroring. With 11 and a half inch wide wheels, I would go with a 235, 35, 19. Those are working best for me. 275, 30, 19 is up in the air. I'll let you guys know as soon as I get them on. For 11 to 12 degrees of camber, roughly where I'm at. Something also to take note is if you're not willing to cut and extend your tire rod, I am pretty much pushing these tie rods to the max. I think I have four threads left. Um, they say they at least have two to three. I'm pushing them pretty close to the max. So if you go any further than what I've explained to you, just know these stock tie rods don't like to go much further. They don't have much more travel in the threads. You might have to look into getting those cut and extended also, or you'll have to look into finding aftermarket with the same thread pitch that may be a little bit longer. That's possible. I've done that on the front. I believe I have Cadillac DTS or CTS tie rods in the front. They're longer, but they're the same thread pitch to account for the new length added by cambering the front. That's something that you may need to look into also with extending the lower. Now, you may be able to cut and shorten the upper control arms. And that would help you not have to deal with that. But I went with the lowers because they look a little more aggressive. I think I just think it looks cooler. That's kind of my, that's personal preference. It's up to you guys though. 12 degrees of camber, 13 inch wide wheels, all those things accounted for. You'll pretty much be in the same ballpark as me. I hope somebody else does it. I know it's a lot to take in. I know it's going to be a lot of money. I know it takes a lot of time. I know it takes a lot of effort. And yes, I know I'm stupid, but man, I love this stuff. I love doing it. And I appreciate every one of you guys come up and ask me about it. Truly and genuinely enjoy the conversation. That means a lot to me. It helps me validate why I did it other than self gratitude. And that means a lot to me. You know what I mean? With that being said, I think the main bullet points here are, it's not as hard as you think. It's fairly simple to put the whole system in. You're going to have to be prepared to spend money on a new suspension system. Other than that, if you're willing to dump off your mid pipe, which I actually had to do before I could afford to do the rest of the mid pipe back, uh, I just bought little, little turn down end pieces and I ran my car like that for a while actually. And if you're okay with that and the way that sounds and the way that feels on your underbelly, because that does rattle your floorboards a little bit, there's not really a mounting point under there, then you can kind of get in this car for about 1500 bucks, honestly, if you can find a good deal on an IRS. If you can find a good deal on an IRS, you could get into everything for a little under, I'd say from 15 to 2000, you'd probably be in that price range and doing your own labor, you could be in the same ballpark. Adding camber creates a whole new world of things you gotta do, but I mean, it's not as hard as you guys think. I know I get a lot of questions. It's only four mount points, the axle, the drive shaft, that kind of stuff. 
it's straight bolt on, straight play. You go right into it, you get out on the road. Also something to take note of is if you install this system, as soon as you install it, you'll lay all the way to the floor. If that's something you're into and that's what you want and that's what you're after, if that's a question you might have, this system will allow you to lay all the way on the floor with no camber. You can lay all the way down. It'll tuck your wheels as far as you need them. The wheel wells comply with any most wheels. 18s are a lot better, but 19s I was able to tuck them, sit all the way on the floor. So if that's what you're after, if you're just after laying down all the way, tucking wheel, this will 100% get you where you want to be. If you want to get camber, you'll have to go through those hoops like I did, but you'll be able to get where you want to be. And like I said, if I missed anything, and I mean anything, message me on Instagram at I am Haynes, I A M H A Y N E S, and I'll answer any questions you want or comment down below. I'll make a whole new video in a Q&A style format with the car still up on jack. I'll go through all of it and show you visuals and I'll explain more in depth to those specific questions if I'm able to help you that way. Like I said, guys, I'm here to lay out the blueprint. I wanna help you guys get to this level if you wanna go through what I had to go through to get here. I, I wanna meet more of you guys. I wanna see more of you guys do this. I'd love to roll in with some guys that are willing to do this at shows. I'd love to kick it with some guys that are willing to do this. This is just my style, it's my passion. This is what I love to do. And I think it'd be pretty cool to see some other guys out there that have the same drive, the same passion, but didn't quite know how to get here. And this is helping you guys. It means the world to me. Like I've said before, and I'll say it a million more times, I appreciate all you guys. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate all the positivity. I love the conversations and I want to keep that going. With these videos, I got more coming. I'm going to do stuff in the trunk. I'm going to show you guys the front camera. I'll explain. I'll go over the interior and from there, man, we'll kick it. We'll go to car shows. We'll go to photo shoots, video shoots. We'll hang out with friends, other stancy boys. And we're just going to have a good time with this channel, man. I, I'm, there's not much of an agenda. I'm not after anything. I just want to make videos. I appreciate you guys. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.